Okay, today we're going to take a look at the Logitech G203 LightSync gaming mouse. Now this is quite a basic mouse, um, but it's available for around £20, um, but it's, it's pretty decent. So let's take a look, see what's in the box. Okay, put the mouse there, then other stuff that's in the box. Not a lot else, just got a thing about the other mice, warranty stuff and a sticker. Here's the mouse itself. Now the cable is two meters long, uh, fairly decent size. Uh, it doesn't feel really thick, so that's not gonna get too, uh, sort of drag around too much. It's not a braided cable like some mice, um, but that's not a problem for me. And then here's the mouse itself. So you'll see that this is um, just a plastic casing, um, no rubberized components to it apart from the scroll wheel. Uh, the scroll wheel itself feels slightly rough because of this uh, indentation that they've put on it. Um, it's, it's all right. Um, I prefer the slightly smoother uh, version that we've got on the G402. Um, click wise, not too bad on sound. Let's bring that to the mic. Mouse wheel. Side buttons. So very much micro switch uh, kind of sounding. Um, and yeah, quite quiet really. If we compare that to G402, which I'll bring up to the mic, left and right, middle mouse click, and the other buttons. So taking a further look at this mouse, um, there's nowhere, no sort of indentation down the side where you rest your thumb. Um, the dimensions are 6.2 by 11.6 by 3.8 centimeters. And it weighs 85 grams, so it's really quite light. Okay, so we have a LED here and a light strip that wraps all the way around. Um, now you can do a whole bunch of different options with this. This is quite a flexible RGB lighting system that they've put in this mouse. Um, and compared to the G402, uh, which is, is just a basic uh, LED that pulses uh, with a set color, this is rather colorful. Um, and they have in the software ways to sort of make this into a wave and pulse and breathe and do all different options with it or set it to a static color. Uh, it's very customizable. And in general, software is pretty good, uh, very customizable. And for the six buttons you've got here, uh, you can assign whatever you want to them. Um, this is the button that cycles through the DPI settings. Now, the Amazon page said that the, uh, it cycles through five. I think that's incorrect. I think it's three, uh, judging by the software that I've seen so far. Um, but I'll update the description if I find out anything different. Uh, and it's up to 8,000 DPI. Uh, so you can set this in the software uh, to your to your liking. Set the lower end uh, up to the upper end and then you can cycle through them uh, using that button on the top there. Okay so now let's take a look at the driver software that you get. So it's called Logitech G Hub and we've got it installed here. It's detected the mouse and gives you a nicer image. Uh, let's just look at the overall settings for the app. Now I've disabled automatic updates because I was getting some issues here where the G Hub software was stuck loading or stuck trying to install updates. So I had to reinstall it and I'm hoping that this will fix it as in uh, it won't try and do some updates in the future and get all kind of gummed up. Um, you can see app settings down here to always start, uh, share data, um, like usage data with them. Um, you can look into the mouse settings here. Um, so the, the main thing you might want to look at is the onboard memory mode. So that saves your DPI settings into the memory of the mouse, allows in, allowing you to take the mouse to a different computer and your settings are all there. 
let's go back and back again. OK, so we'll go into the mouse settings now. And again, you can see the graphic of the mouse here. Now, this shows you the uh, what's going to happen with the RGB LEDs in here. So we can go through the different color options in here and see the effect that selecting these will have. That's quite nice. That obviously lets you set the color as well and the rate. So we can speed that up or slow it down. Change the brightness, change the color. Uh, and that is showing on the mouse as well. As soon as you change it here, the mouse shows the, uh, the effect as well. So you can have a look at all the different ones here. So we've got a fixed color that you pick. Uh, cycle, which I quite like, it goes through different colors and uh, you can choose the rate and the brightness. Breathing kind of pulses it on and off. Color wave. Oh, maybe that's the one I like the best. Let's change the rate. whole bunch of different options. Color blend. Screen sample is interesting because that will take uh, a color off of the screen and color the mouse to whatever's in the sample. And then audio visualizer I presume that that will take the audio from the PC and then set the uh, the color accordingly from like what's going on, almost like a spectrum analyzer. So I'm going to put that back to color wave, change that down a bit. Knock the brightness down a tiny, tiny bit. That'll do. Um, freestyle. Ah, so you can. You can change the colors on these corners and then let's go around and then end up in red. So that's a nice way of doing the gradients. And you can add your own uh, styles in there as save preferences. whole bunch of different options for you to choose from depending on what you would really want to do with it. Maybe it'll match your gaming rig a bit nicer if you can configure this. Uh, okay so that's it for the uh, the lighting. Let's look at sensitivity. So we have different DPI settings. Now I've gone through this and adjusted it to what I like. If I press the DPI button on top of the mouse that lets me shift through the different settings. And it does mention this DPI shift. So there isn't a DPI shift button, like a dedicated button on this mouse, um, but there is on the G402. But I think you could assign one to it. So maybe you could reassign the, uh, the DPI button toggler uh, to DPI shift and always keep your mouse on uh, like the top um, DPI setting and then press and hold your DPI toggle button uh, and have that as DPI shift. So you hold it down and then it will go, it'll go all the way down to 400 DPI or maybe you shove it right up depending on what you're trying to do. Um, but these, you just select which one you want to adjust, adjust it down. Uh, you can kind of test it because it's kind of selected it now. Uh, you can see how that behaves um, before you save it into the mouse. Uh, and then we've got the poll rate if you want to uh, change that as well. And assignments. Now this is where it becomes quite flexible. So I've, I've got forward and back on here. So if I wanted to change this to, let's say, I'm going to have this one as back. So if I find it over here, just search for it. Now you just drag it on and then that's changed. And I'm going to do uh, close window. 
Uh, there. Ah, that's what it is. Exit Active App. So I like to be able to do that uh, on my work machine. Uh, so that closes the active window. So useful for when you're going through emails uh, and you just want to close that out. Um, and then you can assign the clicks if you want to. Um, but in general, this is quite flexible and uh, you can assign macros in there, record them. Uh, you can do stuff with the system. So this is to do with the DPI cycling uh, and the DPI shift that we mentioned earlier. And you can assign these to applications as well. So if you've got OBS running um, or a certain game, then you can uh, add in uh, button macros to allow you to, say, toggle the recording or do whatever. Uh, so that's quite neat. Relatively limited on a mouse which doesn't have that many buttons. Uh, but I guess you could uh, use these, these two side buttons um, for some custom actions there. or you can just target a key on the keyboard. So very flexible. Anyway, I hope this has given you some insight into the G203. Um, it's a good mouse. I can see this lasting some time. I'll let you know in the uh, description or comments whether I have any problems with it over time. Uh, it's, it's good value for the money. Um, it's a reasonable size. Uh, I would say slightly on the smaller size compared to the G402. Uh, uh, depends what you're after really uh, and obviously it has less buttons it doesn't have that uh, sculpted area to kind of rest your thumb in um, but I think this one feels pretty good uh, the RGB options although I thought it was a bit gimmicky they do look pretty cool uh, and I do like the the effect that that gives um, so in general I'm, I'm pretty happy with this um, they can be picked up quite regularly on lightning deals on Amazon so it's currently on for $17.99 uh, which is uh, cheaper than I paid for it for you a few days ago, which is frustrating. Um, but it is pretty good. So I'd certainly recommend it or recommend sort of having a look at this one and whether you might actually find the uh, G402 uh, the right one for you, depending on whether you need more buttons. Um, but you do lose out on that RGB element. Anyway, I hope this was useful. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.